Hello everyone and welcome to the update on Mars Direct 3. Um, some of you may have watched last year's presentation and uh, I have since uh, done some updates. I have done my homework. I have changed on uh, issues that were commented uh, in the previous year and I have added all the things. So let's get started. The Mars Direct 3 well, first of all, I have to thank the designers of these wonderful animations. Um, there's still someone with noise in the mic. I don't know who that is. Um, so I have to thank Mustafa Ivan and Juan Rodriguez for the wonderful animations. Okay. So. I will mute everyone. Okay, so it's based on work by SpaceX and Dr. Robert Sukran. So what is Mars Direct 3? It's a proposal for general architecture for the first Mars mission using SpaceX technology. Uh, it's designed to be safe, flexible, resilient, and affordable. Uh, it uh, gets inspiration and uh, information and uh, from information SpaceX. from SpaceX's. Uh, somewhere uh, so has the okay. Um, from SpaceX's original plan, Mars Direct One and Mars Direct Two. What's the update? What's new? Okay, so first thing, we have numbers this year. Last year it was um, uh, some ideas. I have to say though that we don't even know how much um, uh, SpaceX is uh, spending on Starship right now. We don't know exactly what the cargo capacity or the final mass of the Starship will be. And some of the figures, there are some un uncertainties. So the best thing that can be done is to make a good estimate with, with the numbers that we have right now. And uh, any more detailed approach, approach than that would be useless. So another thing that's new is a working paper. So if you're interested in this presentation, I've already uh, put a link in the chat. And if you're watching afterwards in on YouTube, uh, there will pro probably be a link in the description to the, the first uh, version of this paper. Um, if I don't have time to explain something fully, go to the paper. It's probably be better explained there. There are now cost estimates, more contingency plans, and a good surprise for all the mini Starship hating people in this talk. A Starship only Mars Direct uh, version is explored. I will compare both versions. I believe the, the one with the mini Starship is better. I, um, I have also changed the name of the mini Starship because it's actually not mini, it's quite large indeed. Um, and so the new name is the Caraval ship. Uh, Caraval was the, the kind of ship, the, the name of the, of the ship um, used for, the, for Christopher Columbus's uh, missions to the new world. So I think it's a, a, an appropriate name. Next, um, why Mars, Mars Direct 3? Uh, why? Well, the first reason is SpaceX has a plan, but it's too simple. They do not have a detailed approach to landing on Mars. Dr. Supran presented the mini Starship in, in 2019, and that is the mini Starship plan. Mars Direct 3 is, includes the mini Starship as a possibility, but it, it, it's much more. The reason Mars Direct is relevant is because the mission needs to be safe. Let me explain. The first landing of people on Mars will be a global event watched by billions of people or all around the world. If gone well, it can be as significant or even more significant than uh, the lunar landings in 1969 and onwards. But if it goes wrong, it would be a catastrophe, okay? We do not want uh, a scene. Uh, I have Ronald Reagan here because he gave the speech of the um, when the, the Challenger uh, explosion. We do not want to have this happen with the whole world watching. That would be terrible, not only for the lives of the astronauts and their families, but it, it would do great moral damage to society and likely cancel um, 
the program due to lack of public support. So this is something we must avoid at all cost. Okay, this is really, really bad. So, um, the SpaceX architecture is simple, you probably know, and I'm just going to do a very, very quick review. Land on Mars with starships, we fuel them via water electrolysis and the Sabatier reaction. And the thing relies on extracting ice fr uh, from Mars and processing it, uh, doing ice IU. And uh, SpaceX is currently planning on using solar power. There's no plan B in case the ISIU fails. And how likely is that? Well, the technology is not extremely complex, but we know there's water because uh, satellite surveys have uh, done some analysis and some excavations by the rovers have found uh, some amounts of ice beneath the surface. But there's a huge leap from, from that to being sure that uh, large scale um, extraction of water and filtering because there will be lo loads of stuff mixed with that water um, can be done safely. Um, it is nevertheless the future uh, for long term uh, missions, but for the first mission to establish the architecture, it's quite dangerous and even worse than instant death for the astronauts in, in an explosion would be the slow death uh, due to hunger or starving or other causes. This is something we must avoid. So it's not bad that SpaceX has not developed their architecture. They're focusing on the, on the Starship. Uh, the Starship is great. I'm not against it. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, Mars Direct 3 will use both. The thing is, with SpaceX's architecture, 645 tons of fuel are required uh, to, for the return. If 15 tons of fuel, uh, of, fuel of, of cargo are brought back, I consider um, life support as part of the, of the cargo because um, the 120 ton figure uh, estimated for Starship only counts for, for the structure. So I count life support as cargo. Um, so the solar panel architecture uh, would require 137 uh, uh, tons of solar panels, um, 2,000 cubic meters in volume, and um, 3.4 square kilometers of solar panel area that would have to be maintained and clean. This is a huge amount of solar panels, okay? This is very hard to manage. And uh, this would have to be deployed by three full starships and believe me they are full. So why not use both ships um, as opposed to what um, Mars Direct 2 introduced? Um, Mars Direct 3 is about using both uh, unless of course you use the starship only uh, solution which will be discussed. Bringing fuel to Mars is extremely spent expensive in terms of mass. Using a small ship means less fuel uh, requirements, but also less cargo capacity. But what if you use the st big starships for cargo as, spa as SpaceX is already planning on using, but you use the mini starship for the return of the crew. That way you get huge amounts of cargo uh, given by the starship and also uh, the lower amount of fuel required for uh, returning. How do you avoid relying on ice mining for the return? Well, if you watched last year's presentation and you're familiar with the original Mars Direct, a possibility is bringing hydrogen from the Earth uh, to be reacted with the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and not rely on water to extract the hydrogen. However, hydrogen is hard to manage. The tank uh, would be quite large. And given that it's the, the smallest molecule, uh, H2, uh, if not counting just atoms, it leaks. Uh, so this is a better option given by um, using both ships. If you bring 40 tons, uh, in fact, that accounts for some extra fuel for safety. If you bring 40 tons of liquid methane to the Martian surface, given that um, 
and the Raptor engine runs um, 22 percent on liquid methane and the remaining 78 percent on liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen can be produced from um, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, so only 22 percent of the fuel needs to be taken to Mars. If you also use the bigger ship to take the fuel for the smaller ship, bringing fuel is not such uh, a penalty. So, uh, I will not have time to go deep into this. Uh, if, if you are interested and you're watching afterwards, you would have to pause the presentation. More information is, uh, is, given, is given in the paper, but these are the basic assumptions. Uh, Starship power mass of 420 tons, cargo capacity of 110, Raptor engine ISP of 378, and the rest, if you're interested, you watch afterwards because I have no time. Okay. The Carvel ship, previously known as the Mini Starship, has a dry mass of 25 tons, cargo capacity of 32 tons, fuel capacity of 148 tons, and this is important uh, because this is larger than the cargo capacity of a Starship. So at launch, because it uses the idea introduced by Dr. Subrin in Mars Direct 2, uh, it launches into a um, um, highly elliptical orbit around the Earth. So the Starship la launches the, the mini Starship, then it refuels, um, and it goes to, it burns uh, three kilometers per second of delta V, and the remaining 2,300 uh, 2, meters per second are done by, by the caravel. Uh, this uh, has a tremendous reduction in, in the fuel uh, capacity needed. So the Caval will launch half full at 49 tons of fuel. Has run one Raptor engine, and this is one thing that's new this year. One, the, the, perhaps the best criticism I got, I got in last year's presentation is that even if you have tons of contingency plans, if the Raptor engine fails, mission is over. So SpaceX is already going to develop smaller engines for their lunar uh, Starship. So uh, the, the development of these, uh, I call them Raptor Junior engines, would not need incremental cost because SpaceX has to develop them anyway for the moon. So they, <clears throat> they can be really inexpensive engines. They don't have to be efficient at all. 300 uh, seconds of ISP is good enough. They just have to be reliable and have a big throttle capacity from 3.5 tons each to 6 tons each. And that, <clears throat> uh, then the Carol will have six of uh, such engines. So, what's the mission profile of the Carol ship? Yeah, it's not board uh, the, uh, the Carol inside of, of the Starship. The thing takes off. Six astronauts board uh, the ship, by the way. Let's lift off. Then uh, it's separation at three kilometers per second away from LEO. This has required three tankers. Then it perform performs the, the last turn and it's on a six way, six month trajectory to Mars, which is a free return trajectory. And then it lands using the six Raptor Junior engines. There's a bit of excess fuel, so it can hover a bit to land. Uh, a conservative landing approach can be um, undertaken. Then after one and a half years of staying, this some of the animations are old, uh, the ship returns to Earth, it air breaks, it gets into a highly elliptical orbit once again, and then a, a starship picks it up and it lands inside of the starship. Uh, landing inside of the Starship allows, uh, gives two benefits. On the one side, it can land, it can have, uh, do the rest of the trip with a rapid vacuum engine. It doesn't have to save fuel for landing on the Earth, um, which is very important. And it can land on a ship that is more reliable because it has landed multiple times. It also fits perfectly, after all, it's, it's a ship that uh, launch it, launched it into into orbit. At uh, return, the, the caravel would uh, be at 30 something tons, which is less than the 50 tons um, the maximum that a starship can land. So, 
all the hardware, uh, hardware necessary for Mars Direct 3. A tanker rover, uh, one, one of the configurations, it uh, carries fuel, uh, oxidizer, and methane. And in the other one, it just carries water. A pressurized rover, a solar panel deployment rovers, CO2 electrolysis that are as demonstrated by Moxie. If you, if you want more information about these, um, there is in the in the paper. There's also salty reaction machinery needed, the first Mars space module, and ice mining equipment. So big big chart here. Fuel production requirements for both variants of uh, Mars Direct Three. I won't go into every detail, but roughly the cargo needs 4.2 times less stuff, less energy, less uh, panels and thus less area and less volume. If instead of solar panels, uh, nuclear and uh, nuclear fusion, uh, fission, sorry, reactors are used, um, then the, the only working uh, space reactor is kilopower by NASA. And so in the 10 kilowatt configuration, 21 would be needed in the Carol variant and 85 in the Starship only variant. How many ships? I've, if you've watched the trailer, it says four ships. This is in the Carol uh, version. Each Carol requires three tanker missions and each Starship to Mars requires five tanker missions. So, in a cargo and starship architecture, four ships are launched, which are given the names of the famous Spanish ships, the Columbus ships, and the first ship to circumnavigate the world. This gives us 23 launches for the entirety of Mars Direct 3, including tankers, obviously. 10 minutes. However, uh, Mars Direct 3 in the configuration of uh, can you please mute yourself? Please. Thanks. 42 uh, launches. Excuse me. Carrie, yes. can you start the next meeting or I'll hop out and start it? So it's 10 minutes left? 10 minutes left. Okay, thanks. 10 minutes. I'll oh. go ahead and log the other call. Okay. 42 launches and seven uh, starships landing on Mars to do this with uh, starships. This is more expensive, obviously. Um, so I don't have much time for landing animations. I will make, um, I will re-upload this with uh, better animations, but I'll have to go a bit quicker. Starship Victoria, uh, I'll, this will go on for the Carol version. Uh, Starship Victoria would carry uh, all of this stuff, but most importantly, ISIU machinery, solar panel deployment rovers, and a load of solar panels, and the 40 tons of uh, liquid methane. Uh, this will be in the first launch window. Second launch window, uh, Mini Starship Pinta would launch. No time for animations, sorry. You've watched that one already. On board, no crew, by the way. Um, all of this is, it's basically an empty crude version. Uh, I won't go into this, you can watch it later, but it will demonstrate the landing capacity of the cannibal ship and provide us a backup. Uh, there's an issue with this animation for some reason, but it was in last year's presentation. It's basically the solar panel deployment rover deploying solar panels on the ground. Um, I apologize, but you get the idea. Uh, second launch window, the crewed ship. Um, the previous uh, small, uh, the previous cargo ship carried the fuel tanker version. This one carries the water tanker version. Uh, okay. So phase one would be the astronauts arrive. In this, the third ship, they land the flag, they deploy the rover, and they start transporting the fuel 
stored in the um, uh, in in Starship Victoria to the mini Starship. Um, I forgot to mention the the Starship will already be fully fueled with uh, liquid oxygen as well as liquid methane. The methane it was taken from Earth. The liquid oxygen it has harvested from the Martian atmosphere by using electrolysis, the CO2, and the crew will not depart the Earth if this fuel is not already uh, present on Mars. So uh, the crew takes a few uh, trips to fill up the caravel ship. Uh, they have two caravel ships to choose from since they have uh, one spare. They can inspect both and decide which one is safer to pick. Um, Starship Santa Maria would be the last uh, ship to arrive. It would take one and a half months longer than the, than the crew ship to allow for a contingency plan that will be explained later. It will contain the first motion half, a pressurized rover, and all the material, uh, more solar panels, and all the material required for um, water extraction from uh, under the surface. Phase two, exploration, ice mining, and base deployment. Basically, they now have a uh, pressurized rover, which uh, if given enough good Tesla batteries could have uh, hundreds of, of kilometers of range. And they use it to explore around, transport stuff, uh, solar panels, um, extra solar panels back to, to the camp. And they deploy the base and they can stay there to test it out. Though this is not required because um, uh, the, the cable ship is good enough. If this fails, the crew is, is fine. Next. Contingency plans. This is perhaps uh, the most important part in Mars Direct 3. Five minute warning. Thank you. Um, so in order to avoid this tragic situation described at the beginning, we need contingency plans. So Mars Direct 3 is prepared for everything. Like three out of the four ships can crash. The crew is fine. Even the crew ship can crash if it's not fatal. It's prepared for almost anything. So let's go. Contingency beta, failure of the first wave. So as I mentioned, if any of the two ships that arrive on the first launch window a crash or they fail to produce uh, the fuel, which is unlikely given that it's just har harvesting CO2 and redundant machines will take in. Whatever, if that happens, the crew is safe because they are on Earth and they have not launched towards Mars. This is the safest possible outcome. So already, if two of the ships crash, the crew is safe. Uh, the mission will be postponed, of course, but the crew will be alive. The disaster will be avoided. Basically, the idea of all of these contingency plans is to make uh, failure, to turn failures into bad days, not tragic days. Contingency gamma, failure mid-flight. What if for some reason the, the cable ship is going to Mars and there's an, a problem with the ships on, on the ground and there's a leak or an explosion? Well, the cable ship can, can do a free return trajectory and, and land safely on Earth one year later. Um, so in this scenario, the crew would survive as well. They would lose a year of their lives. That's too bad, but they would uh, live the rest. Contingency Epsilon, engine failure on landing. What if one of the Raptor Junior engines fails? Well, that's why you have redundancy. The, op the one symmetrically opposite would shut down and the remaining four Raptor Junior engines could safely land. Uh, could be safe and everything would be fine. But what if not one, but two of the engines, of the Raptor Junior engines fail? And if they're symmetrically opposite, that's fine. But if they're not, uh, they would not be able to land. Well, you have another layer of security. The main vacuum raptor engine could do a suicide burn, as was proposed last year as the only alternative. And the mission would still proceed normally. The crew would be once again, once again safe. What if the crew caravel ship crashes? I'm getting serious here. Well, uh, there's no way around it. Uh, I don't. Th I don't think any plan can get around this fact. If the crew crew uh, ship crashes, 
they're dead. But what if there's a crash, but it's not a terribly hard crash? Two, two minutes. Okay. The crew could walk to Carol Pinta and everything would be fine if they're not injured. The field transport rover could be used to transport the wounded if necessary. Could you please mute yourself? We can be safe once again. What if the crew land far away from the previous ships? Well, uh, there are two alternatives. Uh, well, f uh, phase one would start as normal, and one and a half months later, uh, Santa Maria would land and uh, autonomously deploy the, the crew, the, um, crew rover, the pressurized rover, which could be remotely controlled by the crew. If they land within the range of the rover, uh, it could, the Santa Maria would land uh, with the other two ships, uh, the rover would pick them up, and they would be at camp. If they're twice the range of the rover, uh, the Santa Maria would have to deviate and land in the middle. Um, if the fourth ship crashes, there's no problem because it's not critical for the survival. It would make um, future missions less uh, prepared, but the crew would survive um, the fourth ship crashing. What if there is a global dust storm? Uh, will they be able to survive if they only rely on solar panels? That looks quite bad. Well, uh, there is extra methylox fuel for them when they arrive, so the fuel transport rover, which has fuel cells capable of producing electricity, is connected to the cargo ship, and so it's essentially a huge, huge battery, which, as you could read in the paper, allows for 100 days with zero solar panel production. What if the Raptor, Raptor vacuum engine fails during ascent? You'll have to go to the paper to read that out, but in most cases, the Raptor Junior could perform uh, an emergency landing. I encourage you to read the paper for an, uh, an extended study of this case, but the crew would be safe in most scenarios, almost all of them basically. But this is extremely, extremely unlikely, but what if there's just no way they're stuck on Mars? So we, we are out of time, but we can't leave them stuck on Mars, so talk fast. Okay, I'll talk fast. A rescue mission with the entire field could be launched with two starships, six for a starship only variant. Comparison between the cattle and the starship only alternative. The development cost is relatively cheap uh, of the cattle because it has the same engine, same material, same heat shield technology. Everything is the same, it's just smaller scale. 23 versus 42 launches, that's something to consider. Uh, making life support systems for a smaller ship is a lot less expensive, on, not only for development, but also every time you launch, and also a cheaper and more uh, and safer uh, uh, rescue mission to the ground. Finally, Moon Direct 3. More details in the paper, there's no time, but a caravan could uh, launch in, uh, in the same way as Mars Direct 3, and land three, six tons of fuel on Mars, and the Starship to land 100. This would be a total okay. of 11 months. Um, I was just wondering about uh, initial resources that would be needed. You were talking about cargo for ISRU and, and things like that. I yeah. mean, naturally, this is just to get boots on the ground. This is like the safest way to get initial crews there and things like that before the infrastructure is set up. I'm just wondering how much of that initial infrastructure are you thinking with the Mars Direct 3? architecture you know like to, to what extent would cargo variants be um starting the uh, early efforts to keep a manned presence there thank you that's a good question so uh so this slide explains this a bit uh master 3 is not only a uh, flax and footprints mission it will leave behind uh fully functional isiu uh, machinery if uh, water uh, digging has worked fine. It, there will be fuel for the next mission or possibly two more missions. And you'll have demonstrated uh, all the technology. Uh, the, the, the first half will be there, a rover will be there, and as I said, uh, a huge amount of solar panels will be there, and especially the ISIU machinery in Sasha Victoria. I'm sorry I had to 
um, speak quite fast in the talk. Hopefully you can uh, read the paper and 